thank you so much. It really is my honor and privilege to be here this afternoon. See what I can do to talk to you a little bit about education before the itis sets in on some of y'all. <laughs> doesn't mean you have to know I act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love those when you get together. <laughs> it's imperative for me that we have a conversation. I feel almost as if I'm at a shareholder's meeting. You folks pay more than virtually anybody in this region for your schools. They're your schools. You really bought them. Good or as bad as they are, they're yours. And so today I want to talk to you about transformative leadership. I want to talk about the many levels of our responsibility here today. I want to bring you greetings as a, as a brother, as a friend from far away who doesn't understand what 97 different municipalities that are called Birmingham really means. <laughs> who has seen too many children all over this country have to wait for grown people to eat first, second, and third before they get there first, who is sick and tired of hearing about a strong teachers union. That's funny to me. Y'all ain't scared of teachers, are you? I mean, what is a teacher really going to do? Suspend you? <laughs> Probably all say he gets nervous when he gets around this case. I said, I do too, man. I'm scared to say it when you are. I am disturbed by the fact that we know where the good schools in Birmingham are. Y'all very proud of Phillips. You heard Phillips, you heard Phillips, you heard Phillips, you heard Phillips. You heard Phillips. A lot of your kids go to Phillips. So if you know where Phillips is, you know where some raggedy schools are too. <laughs> you know where a lot of raggedy schools are with some employees who are tenured and set for life. You know exactly what are. You can run your hand across the raggedy building, go inside and see raggedy lessons. But beautiful children. Every single one of those children woke up this morning because those schools are still in operation today. Every single one of those children woke up this morning with the expectation that they were going to be given access to a quality education. And then what happens is, Grown people bring me in and they say, well, can you talk to them about they could want to be anything in life if they just try? And I come in there and I do what you ask me to. I, well, you could be anything you want if you just try, knowing that I'm lying to them because they go to a horrible school. They go to a school that every single one of you is glad that you don't have to send your children to. People often ask me about teachers, how do I know a good teacher? Well, when I walk by the room and I feel like I gotta walk a little faster, because I gotta guess with me, I don't wanna be embarrassed by this fool. She got me fired. You have a very committed and capable superintendent. Please give him a round of applause. without your full support. You know what kind of schools you have today, and if you're proud of them, all right. <laughs> I guess. I'm not though. I cannot sit here as your brother and be honest with you and tell you that you're delivering a high quality education. Look at the comparison within your own state. Look at the comparison from state to state. And I'm not, I'm not prepared to accept that any one of your children is less intelligent than any other child in this country. You remember like I do when they were born, when they came out of the womb. You remember how you told the stories, how quickly they learned songs and sounds, how they could create stories of their own, how they mastered the language, how they were capable to 
amazed you at every juncture. You were grown people looking at these little bitty children and watching as they did these amazing things and then they get to school and they have trouble reading. How many times have I heard educators tell me that, well, if the parents would just do more, how nice would that be to be a physician who only had to operate on people who didn't need an operation? <laughs> Pilots who didn't have to take anybody anywhere that they needed to go, they were already there. How nice would it be if we as educators simply need to look at you and make it go on? People tell me so often that they believe in children. Yeah, a lot of y'all are Christians too. I've seen how you believe. I'm not so impressed. Talk to your children and ask them. Ask them if they feel like you believe in them. Ask them if they feel like you put them first. Every single time we sit down and have a conversation about closing schools, we're not talking about closing schools as if there's something wrong with the children. It's the educators. It's us. It's me. It's the individuals who are paid and educated and expected to teach children how to do something. There are very few professions in which the name of the job is what you do. You teach. You are a teacher. And if you can't teach a child because of his circumstances, we understand probably why don't you find something else to do. I'm here to explain the circumstances as they are. I'm here to have a shareholders meeting. To talk to the people who are going to benefit or lose if your schools don't figure this out. Right now. How is it possible that at a time when the rest of the country has children who are able to choose one school over the other, your children do not get that choice? Say that again. Say that again. back. Your children get that choice. Other folks' kids don't get that choice. Because they don't have the means or the wherewithal to move to a community. They gotta lie and break the law. Say they live with a cousin in them and an aunt in them, get on a city bus to a school bus to take a ride to a school that's gonna give them a halfway decent education. People often tell me that parents don't understand and we don't want to put choice in the, in the hands of the parents because they don't know. Every single school that has been seen in this country as a quality school has a waiting list of parents who ain't supposed to know. Somehow figured out, whether it be through the drums or whatever, the rumors or the grapevine, somehow they found out. Somehow these same parents that so many people want to paint as lazy and unwilling to care about their children, the same ones that y'all said want to do homework with a child, somehow find a way to get their name on an application or try to beat the system. Stealing a quality education is much like stealing air. I cannot believe in a town such as Birmingham town that the rest of us look to. And I mean this, and I'm being real with you. The rest of the country and world remember you. We know your heritage. We know your story. We are impressed by your power. You've overcome the greatest of all circumstances. You created a way to come together when it didn't seem possible. Hell, y'all got AT&T and Verizon on the same thing. <laughs> It's so easy to blame poverty and race 
Well, we got all these black kids in the school. Isn't that the same argument that got y'all riled up before? 